I just want to share some of the work we're doing around entrepreneurship in San Francisco and how we're using entrepreneurship to really transform government, to be more responsive, to be more effective, efficient, and equitable. Um, this journey started two years ago, and it's really a, an amazing story where we brought together startups from across the globe to work on government problems. Uh, in San Francisco, our airport shared with us a need that they had. They wanted to help disabled people, visually impaired people, travel and navigate through the airport uh, much more seamlessly. And so uh, we brought together a company from Vienna, Austria, called Indoors. And they worked with them over 16 weeks to build this amazing solution to help people navigate through the airport. And uh, at the end of those 16 weeks, it was amazing to see the executive director from a nonprofit called Lighthouse for the Blind for the first time in her life to be able to actually navigate through that airport on her own without any assistance. And that was done in 16 weeks. And for us, that was a really powerful moment where collaboration between sectors and across sectors really showed its value. Um, and so when we launched this program, we had an amazing response. We had over 200 startups apply to, this, uh, to the program. It's a voluntary program um, over 16 weeks where we share our needs and startups uh, try to address those needs. And uh, from that, we had six startups create amazing solutions like the one I shared with you. And so we said to ourselves, well, we, we want to do more. How can we actually make bigger impact? Um, our ultimate goal is to make government much more uh, just efficient and effective. And so for us to be able to do that, we knew we need to bring a whole bunch of folks on board. And so we worked with uh, the Department of Commerce. They gave us a grant, and it's a three-year grant uh, to help scale this program out. So we're now working with City of Oakland, San Leandro, and West Sacramento as a cohort. Um, and in 2016, we had some amazing results from this effort. We had 30 challenges that were issued by those cities. Um, and we had over 100 applicants apply. And we had uh, 14 partnerships. And they were all happening at the same time. And that was amazing uh, sort of first for us to be able to manage this cohort together as cities, saying, hey, these are our needs. Let's work with entrepreneurs to actually resolve these needs. And let's create a lot of value. And so uh, we're now seeing this program being replicated across the world. Amsterdam is in their second year. We've been working with them closely. Um, my only suggestion to them, one of the first requirements was, hey, make sure you use the same brand. We want to signal to the sort of global entrepreneurs that, hey, your city's friendly. And so they took the uh, startupinresidence.com. We, we now have .org, unfortunately. Uh, so they took that a little too literally and took our domain name. Um, and so we have Pittsburgh, Kansas City, and a number of organizations lined up. Um, our goal is really uh, to have a global network of cities saying, hey, we understand the power of startups. We understand the power of entrepreneurs to transform government. Let's work together. And so we're building this network, a global network. Um, next year, we're going to have 12 cities that we're scaling to. And so if there's any cities here, uh, representatives from cities that are interested in participating, let us know. Uh, we're looking at how, what that uh, model looks like. Uh, but generally, it's going to be sort of two, two approaches. One is uh, very closely held partner cities that work as cohorts. And we provide them a toolkit, playbook, resources, project management, uh, resources, et cetera, to be successful. And we work together. So we share the same solicitation. We share all of the work together. And then there's going to be cities that want to do this on their own, sort of DIY. And we want to create an open source playbook for those cities. Um, one of those things that we sh are sharing that we think is really valuable here is the, is the playbook. Uh, we've learned a lot from our first year in 2014 and, and more learnings in 2016. One of the first things we learned in 2014 is that procurement is even harder than we thought it was going to be. So uh, that startup I mentioned to you, Indoors, um, they created a great solution. It took two years for our airport to issue an RFP. And two years uh, for a startup might as well be 20 years. Uh, thankfully, they're still around, still doing business, and they responded to that RFP. Um, so we needed to tackle that problem and approach. So one of the things that we created was the RFP bus. And our innovation here was really quite simple. We did two things. We batched all of our RFPs into one uh, sort of vehicle, uh, hence the bus term. So instead of 17 separate RFPs to apply to the program, it was one RFP. And the second thing was, 
we did this before you actually participated in the program. So uh, normally, you go through this process, you talk, you go through an RFP, and then you're awarded the contract. Well, we said, hey, we want to try before we buy. We want to see if this partnership is creating value for you, for us, over 16 weeks. Can you create a new product? Can you take an existing product and get product market fit? Um, and if that's the case, then we just need to commercialize it. Let's get that contract going and move forward. Um, so those two sort of changes, really simple changes, uh, allowed us to do, and I think it might be a world record. I don't know if there's any records on this, but we did 17 RFPs at the same time in six weeks uh, with 20% of one person's time on my, on my staff. And so it shows you that, hey, you can actually operate within the existing constraints and create some new approaches. We're now sharing that approach to Oakland, to the other cities, and uh, we're now looking at extending that to the contract. If you are a startup and you uh, have the chance to look at a government contract, it's 40, 50, 100 pages long, and you don't have legal resources. So our goal is to actually create a streamlined, much more accessible and friendly uh, software contract and, and sort of work, enables uh, startups to, to work with government much more easily. We couldn't do this with a, a whole bunch of support. We have a, some great support here in the Bay Area from VCs, from uh, tech leaders, from a whole bunch of folks. Um, one logo that's not here is NASDAQ, Entrepreneurial Center. They've been a huge support for us in convenings and sharing with us how to grow this program. So a great thought partner, and uh, we're working with them closely. The Hub and so many other organizations are supporting the work that we're doing. Um, I want to just close by, by sharing that you know, our, our goal here really is to transform government. And we fundamentally believe that technology is, it has a huge role to play in that. And if you think about the transformative ability of startups and how they've transformed so many other industries, they have yet to make impact in government. And we are a huge market. Uh, government spending on technology in the US is over $150 billion annually. Globally, it's a huge, huge number. You're talking $2 trillion. And when we think about making impact, working on some of the problems that we have, helping homeless people get services better, helping foster parents uh, through the fostering process, those are the problems that we shared, and solutions were created in 16 weeks. And many of these companies were hesitant to go into the public sector market, and they're now finding success. Um, so really, our goal is to create value uh, for our governments by transforming them. Second, we think there's a huge amount of value exchange. When you think about uh, sort of the, the methodologies that startups have, whether it's human-centered design, lean, all of those things are applicable in government. So we have a training program around this to go train government staff as well as uh, the startups about how do you do business? Who's your economic buyer? What is open data? How do you actually navigate through the contracting process? And the last thing is really about um, unlocking this market. Uh, for, for all these folks. So uh, we want to create a sustainable and growing ecosystem, and we need hundreds, and we need thousands of entrepreneurs tackling this. We need more VCs like Ron Bouganim. We need more folks investing in this place uh, to be successful. Uh, it will happen. The question is when and how, and so we want to be a, a big part of that in accelerating uh, the work that's happening. Thank you.